Hey guys, it's Big Bear Berg with the Boneyard uh, Podcast here. Guys, we have our guest here, uh, Graf Mir. Um, he is a higher up, I don't know, leader higher up in 11th E. Uh, he's a warden, and uh, welcome in, guys. Um, go ahead. Yeah, uh, presenting, I think, uh, some point, 11E. Um, I'm second in command in 11 EFL. Okay. Uh, we have like three branches, um, depending a bit on nationality and also time zone. It's 11 ERC, which is our French mother regiment, and 11 EFL is like the international branch. And 11 ECN is our uh, newest branch, most recent one, and they are Chinese based. Yeah. How many um, members are in 11th E? Um, just all branches, just uh, spitball? Um, yeah, it's. We say when we say active members, we mean that they played within the last two months. Okay. It's it's always quite hard how to exactly do you track active, right? Okay. So after about two months of inactivity, people will be in a different register. But uh, so within the last two months, about eight to nine hundred people. Right on, big regiment. All right, cool, man. Um, well, um, let's get started here with our first question of the day. Um, um, what uh, what do you feel about the update, man? How do you feel about, um, or at least, you know, dev branch and the dev preview, all the boat, all the facility changes? How do you feel about that? And um, I'm going to kind of ask you also to kind of give what you think most wardens are speaking on about it. Um, your regiment, you kind of just speak on what you guys think. Yeah. Um, I have to admit that it, it, it changes quite a lot the longer... Um the death stream is in the past like uh, the expectation like, I mean in general the perception at least is from my understanding is bad overall um, but it's it's also it's so specific right like um, we have fast the entire facility thing is like a huge mess um, there's a lot of values scuffed up in my opinion um the, the vision is not really working. The, well, in my, my opinion, it's it's always opinion based, right? But for us, we don't see it work. That's the main issue. Like if you lose so much control as a facility operator, um, and Solo Man has so much power to not even like all of this is like even not taking into mm -hmm. account like um, purposeful griefing, right? It's not mm -hmm. even purposeful, like, not even with malicious intent, and there's so much that people can involuntarily fuck up. It's insane. Uh, but, I mean, if you look at Discord, in the in the feedback, right, on Ford, and if you look on Reddit, I, I feel like the majority of players shares that opinion, at least everyone who touched facilities, and everyone who never touched facilities thinks this will be, like, the Messiah update, like, facilities will now be public for everyone. I don't know. It, it feels super weird. Like, mm -hmm. I really try to like it because it's meant to be a quality of life update, but I really struggle to see any quality of life for facilities. It's, um, yeah. And the longer, like, the, the worst thing is, you know, the longer you look at it, the more revelations you get. Like, oh my god, this will not work. Oh my god, this will not work. Oh my god, this also will not work. And it's, it, it gets worse and worse the longer we have to play with the death bridge. Okay. Well, um, let me, um, let me ask you like this. Um, do you see truthfully, um, cause the more I've talked about it with my guys, um, do you think that this will stop people from claiming fields and actually build facilities more near towns now? That way, the resources have to be grabbed and then brought to said place. Um, I think that's where the meta is shifting, is to stop claiming fields. And if you do claim a field, understand that most of it's going to be used as public. And, I mean, when you're talking about, like, pecans and stuff, um, you know, you got to bring CMATs and then the comps to make that. And then you also have to have your own diesel. So... All in all, like, I don't think component fields are going to get messed up. I I don't think that, um, I really don't think that, 
I don't think coal will get that messed up because you have so many refineries. I think the only one that could get tampered with if you built on a scrap field is where you're going to get the most non even alting or non malicious activity where you're going to get your slots filled. And even at that, if they pull them out, they, they lose their Q spot. Um, and then to top that, if they can only sit in there for 28 hours, is that possibly a, yeah. a bother? Yes. Um, but I can also see it to where it's like, if, if it's becoming such an issue, um, just build more buildings for public use. And then you're going to be able to fill your slot in there. And I think you just, I think as a, as a, as a community, we need to shift our goals instead of, I need this to work for my facility to how can we make this work for the globe? How can we make this work for our faction? Um, and I know that it's very, you know, it's not easy. And you're also going to have to be sacrificing a lot. Um, it, it's not going to be super easy. Um, and I think there's going to be some growing pains. But the more I've talked about it with my friends, um, the more I see that there is a, a, a slight possibility this is going to get abused. But I also see a possibility where this is going to really help um regiments work with small guys um and not necessarily fighting over fields anymore but more or less like we can just share a building and share a comp field or a oil field i think that the civil war era ends here because now instead of fighting over said resources i can just use your stuff and um kill on site is against tos so i i at uh, one half i mean a lot of stuff a lot of stuff is against know, TOS, it doesn't get i know i know i know i know it's a little, little shaky but um you know I, I i get where you're coming from graph i really do you know and especially the, the as big issue, a regiment as you is, it's 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 a problem exactly. the, the, you know it the, um, first of all this entire claiming this entire claiming thing, right? Uh, on Warden's side, it's different. We have claiming discords, right? Mm -hmm. And you always have to think of this. Like, civil wars weren't really that present on the Warden's side since it got introduced. And, um, like, when people say, yeah, you have to work more with the public, I, I always think they struggle to understand how many people we supply. It's, it's like, yeah, but it's just your own regiment facility. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm supporting, like, eight to 900 peoples of interest. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and that's that's also plays to what you thought about. You have to move the resources, like, mm -hmm. and also like there's there's people that say yeah, but nothing really changed. You just have to shift it into the material transfer station, right? I mean, our minimum PC mat production per day is three thousand PC mats. Shifting that, you will get crazy, and uh, it's always what's your production goal and how feasible is it to be realized, right? And I'm not even talking about the game game breaking stuff here. Um, we are still on philosophy level, like, mm -hmm. oil, the way that we used to know it, is not going to work. Because the system is so fragile that your facility will shut off multiple times per day. Like, there is, like, something inherently wrong with the oil system. Um, b because of the Q system. Because the issue now is, I'm not sure how familiar you were with, like, oil field operation in the past, but... Um, you, uh, there were two options. Either you did not use enough raw oil which meant that your oil well was backlogging, which is always bad because it means you could, well, use more. And the other option was you use, you, you need more raw oil than you actually have. That means that in, in most cases that one refinery, one oil refinery was not using 100% of its capacity, but the rest was always running. The issue now is as soon as a queue does not fulfill its demand, which means it does not have enough raw oil, the queue gets cancelled. That means automation is a big issue because as, lo as soon as the input is not exactly output by one milliliter, like uh, on point, the system will cascade into shutting down. And if you get unlucky, it's actually the refinery or the queue that is supplying your entire power supply, right? And like it, cas it cascades. Um, the other issue is it's all built like refineries, right? The entire system with queues is built like refineries. 
And let's talk, for example, about harvesters. They have an inventory of 2,500. Mm -hmm. What happens if your queue runs out? It will be dumped public. Well, it only has an inventory of 2,500. That's minus 2,500 resources, and that's applied to everything. And um, with coal, for example, the good thing is you now need only one coal refinery to get the theoretical output of five. Mm -hmm. The issue is you still only have the input inventory of, uh, of 32,000. You will burn through that coal so fast that you will have issues eventually finding storage because farming six fields, processing it, and then further processing it was always a kind of buffer state. Now you have to spam buildings just to store the coal that you farmed. And all of this is like a lot of shifting time and so on. Well, and there's a way to look at that, fields, though. For example, uh, uh, just one more thing. Mm -hmm. You said that component fields are basically the same. Mm -hmm. um, I fear that, uh, I mean, we, we did not even sc sc scratch the issue of balance, right? But we can all agree the more components are available, for raw components, which means air mats, the, the worse the balance is in favor of one because of their ability to produce good line tanks without the need of facilities. Yes. Um, component fields, broken component fields that are pipeable now, are capable of producing 670,000 components per day. That's five times the output that they had pri previously. There's something called death roulette. If the dev decides one faction has more pipeable comfits than the other, also west to east, comparable, uh, comparable, this can now win and lose wars. Because you don't need that many of those fields operating to completely bankroll an entire front line. So, um, two things I'll say with that is plausible output does not equal population. You can have yeah, a million tanks... Point. Um, but the population now to also equip with that, you're right though, in regards is when you're talking about balance of the game, they didn't touch it. And yes, there is a massive problem with the facility of colonials being the exact same as the wardens because we're two different factions. Um, we rely so heavily on our facility for our good baseline tanks that we cannot keep up. And now that is even a furtherized gap. We now have no chance to keep up with lines. So like the old trade of, well, we one falchion killing a diving three falchions for one HGD used to be worth it. That's not the case anymore because components yeah, I, are liquid. So in that sense, uh, yeah. we fully agree. I mean, it's literally that's the that's the price comparison though is three falchions. For one HCD is a good trade. When you because it's fifty five, right? it's fifty five yeah, armats. Yeah, but, but when you equal it out to when armats are not even, it's like everyone's a millionaire now. It's money's not an option. Com yeah, components aren't an option. Exactly. You know it's so. The tank plan, for example, the HCD has uh, theoretically clearly written advantages and disadvantages, right? Easily getting mm -hmm. flanked, like in in a tank line that uh, theoretically ends at a certain point, the HCD can get flanked. But mm -hmm. what we already saw this war, for example, in Westgate, that was a 300 meter long tank line. There's no flanking. That means the HGD can only play to its strength and has basically, with the exception of the horrible fuel economy, no weakness. And let's be honest, fuel economy is not that great of a weakness compared to its strength, mm -hmm. right? No, and I mean, you're not even, we're not even addressing like most things down that are going to be later in the podcast here is. Yeah, I didn't even ask about balance yet, but, you know, when we're talking about the update, that absence of it balance, it, it not yeah. addressing that issue at all, I, I think that people are going to get their eyes open. Because here's the thing is, you're right in saying that we're going to have five times the amount of um, mats. That's both sides. We're going to – but the thing is, when both sides get set advantage – um, but one side only needs to use them and the other doesn't, except for super toys. Um, you're, we're going to have a massive imbalance. Like, again, I, I, I know I mean, you said ones, ones and like, this is stuff we've said off stream guys, but when you're talking about like 
colonials, we use ones and fours or whatever. Like, all these things get put into bigger items, right? So, ones are in a lot of our crafts, like Spathas. That's our number one, that's our best tank. Like, it's not even a question. It's our best tank. No, like, it's not even debatable. It takes ones and fours. It also takes ones to go into Asmat fives. We now have to have a bigger dip in just gathering said resources, refining, and then putting them in. Um, as to now, the wardens can have five times the amount while we're, I'm going to say theoretically, and this might be off in numbers, but I'm going to say we only have three times the amount because we have to take X amount, put it aside for rail storm cannons, uh, BTs. I, I mean, when you're... I mean, the thing that people <sighs> miss, that, in my opinion, is um, there is like time investment, but resource-wise, mm -hmm. if you speak pure resources, even the Spatha line still is way cheaper than a Warden tank line. Which mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. And in my opinion, I mean, you, I, I know we, we talked about this already in an earlier stream, right? A bit off-topic related, but I I don't really agree on the resource issue because AM1s are like dirt cheap to produce. It's it's, it's really the, the coke and the SMET, uh, like the, the CMET and the coke consumption is really negligible. And in my opinion, whenever we talked about resources, at least in the Warden faction, heavy oil is considered to be free. Because it's always well, on oil fields and there's always, as I said, right? No, That's no, no. And, and to just give, like, the viewers here some some insight on this when we talked about this. Um, the the thing that we kind of agreed upon is if you have a facility, it, that stuff's going to be made either way. But the issue that I'm talking about is not everyone has a facility. And also, colleagues yeah. are not the same as wardens. People are more stingy yeah, yeah. with stuff on the word on the collies because it takes more mats to make the normal stuff. Like, so again, when you have a facility or a faction locked behind facility, even though it's cheaper, time efficiency and moving said things like logistics is harder that's where people I, are going to exactly, be more stingy and that's what yeah. i'm trying to give to and these that, people that was my big point, right? well and that's what that i want to talk to them about is them. is logistically yeah. collies are working twice as hard and it's not because we're just we're hard workers it's the game is forcing us to and exactly. so that's, it's that's, not necessarily yeah. i want to squash this um i want to squash this bug that you know, the Wardens are so, like, they always have tanks on the front. They always have said things. Like, we talked about this, me and Graf, on 18 carts. I mean, you guys also, I mean, you guys, the Collies always, also always have MPTs on the front. Yeah. It's, the issue mm -hmm. is not the MPT, right? Like, we can all agree that crate logistics is not the issue. The issue is that normal logistics of tanks, looking at the standard logistics before 1.0, with crates for the one faction is just inherently better like if, if collies had the ability like, the, my example was trains right like a train like mm -hmm. can let's say transport 12 like 12 tanks or like 12 items or like let's say 10 for easier uh, uh, calculations in the case of wardens that means in nine out of ten cases you're actually transporting 15 tanks and uh, uh, no uh three times 10 30 tanks and but for the collies this is assuming you're upgrading in the back line it's still only 10 spathers and uh, even if you say, okay, so we have to always do frontline upgrades, that's still a lot of assembly materials and um, uh, ones and fours that you have to transport. I mean, it's just a more lo it's, it's just it's more logistics it's always. always. More it's it's yes. no matter which way you cut the cat. Yeah, I mean, it's always more logistics, and so that's where I'm getting at. Like, even if we're supposed to be this horde faction, and like cutting the cat yeehaw dude i just got out of the gun range trounzy <laughs> damn right baby fucking rooting tooting shooting cowboy here no but i mean i i think it's not necessarily so much the balance of tanks is said issue at the moment i think there are some things that i really wish were toned 
but realistically it's the lodgy front really like and i feel like that's why the wardens feel so just always on it man like they always feel like oh my god like we kill tanks and they have more are they just releasing stockpot it's like when you really cut down again cut the cat you're starting to see that it's not so much that their logistics is that much better it's we have to dive 10 times as much or even let's say we're doing by 10 it takes us three trips with a train that it takes for them one and that's only by the 10 meter you know like that's that's time that's other stuff that that train's not transporting and what other stuff could that train bring up in their two trips you know i think we need to stop looking at it as um we need to equal each other you know right like in my personal opinion for example tank performance i mean Spatha, for example, is now performing really, really good. And uh, I also don't think that the entire colonial arsenal is uh, is in a bad spot. And I also don't think that tanks win the war. That, but that's more of a personal take. I mean, in the end, it's always artillery winning the war, right? But um, if you have so much pressure already on the logistics for other reasons, and I mean, there are so many factors counting in here, right? Like multiple layers of factors working together on both sides as well. It's not like the ones only have good things. There's also certain things that suck for us, right? But um, one of the easiest, one of the easiest examples is always the tank balance. And um, I think if both sides have a proper tank line, it's not even said that the colonies will always lose against the one tank line. I think nowadays it's also completely fair that they roll it. But I mean, for us right now, the effort is we have to arm the tanks and we just put another MPT. Cost-wise, it completely doesn't match anymore, right? But um, So, if I can uh, explain this, Graf, um, I just want to kind of chime in here. Um, I, what you said, yes. We have struggled. We always bring up tanks because if we don't have a tank line, we can't have an artillery line. You, you can't sit behind concrete any like as a collie because if you have no tanks protecting your front, we don't have good AT. That's another issue. We don't have solid, I, like, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. We I, don't I, have I cheap agree, disposable but... AT is what I'll say. We don't have cheap disposable AT always readily at the front. And, again, it's yeah. logistically moving stuff. So, it, it's, what I'm getting at is, like, the Bane and the Venom, and I, I know what you're talking about, is very strong. But a Bane can't carry enough rockets without being overweight to kill a tank theoretically you can with an atr you can theoretically carry uh, enough yeah okay but that's hold, really on, hold on hold on hold on time out time out we have great defensive at great defensive at we have no offensive at that doesn't cost an arm and a leg that's that's where the real big difference is and we also have a lot of struggles with defensive stuff, meaning our beat doesn't have the same um, feel as an eat does. Um, we also don't have a HE 45 meter tank. Hold on. What what I'm saying, we've, we've talked, it's a layered problem and they haven't addressed it, any of it. You can't have, so, excuse me, a good arty line without, a good solid front in front of it right we can both agree on that it's going to get either flanked killed whatever so collies always cry about tanks because unless we have something in front of us really protecting the front from getting rushed to, to keep stabilization we struggle to bring arty up because we're so worried about the anti-tank aspect of the game and again until venoms and banes come out we really struggle in the anti-armor game like really struggle in it um at what tier do you if, Venoms? i think it it's i think it's right after light tanks i think we get it uh either that or right after the light tank destroyer so right after ltds i think uh. so again it's coming so late um 
it, we just struggled to hold tier two defenses because when like i'll put an example up like the other war we we had built um a, a town hall up for two days had 360 defenses um and we had polys and stuff so ltd is when we get it sorry uh, my buddy mason uh double check we get it on the ltd tech tier by the way so um right before outlaws and falchions um so that being said, um, we really struggled to defend against a nine tank line um, of it was small tanks. It was like the light tanks, the whatever. Yeah, the good end. Uh, and so the we're good fighting end, uh, the gallants with what's that stupid? Yeah, I want to call it the Panzerfaust, and that's what it is. But it's Ignifus. Ignifus. That that's our AT. And it, it just doesn't give us enough to fight back. And that's why it feels like when the 120 layered on top of you guys get the better 120, we get the better 150, I admit. But when you guys have the advantage of better 120, we don't have, and I, everyone knows, the flask and the ATR, we can't match it with our Typhoon and Ignifus. Like, at that point, tier we struggle so hard when the venom comes out then you struggle with other things because now you're fighting outlaws silver hands like the venom's strong i i know it's strong it's very good again though it's it's cheaper to just make like you could make with um atrs i would always trade for an atr because it's just b mats if i go run and die with it it's just B mats I lost, but if you run out with venoms, yeah. but you only get five a crate, and you only get three a crate, and I understand that, but it's only B mats instead of R mats, and when all of our R mats I mean, are getting chugged, I, and I really again, I'm not fighting you, this. I'm fighting more of the devs on this, and I'm trying to get a warden perspective to understand me, is that's how it feels to be a collie right now, is, I mean, I can, it, I can it, tell it's, you how it feels it I and I love it, yeah. Uh, Flask has 18 meter range, and uh, Bane has 25 meter range, and the ATR theoretically has 40 meter range, but it also has decreased subsystem disability chance, and it has insane bloom. That means unless you're on full cover or you lay down, the bloom is completely horrendous. And um, I'm also telling you, 18 meters for the Flask, that's quite close. And... Um, but That's to be fair, like, but yes, to be fair, can. I'm going to give you my counter now, though. How it feels to be a collie is every single trench is going to knock you down 5% health. And if a tank line fight happens, you are going into a fight 5 to 10%, sometimes even 12% lower in the engagement. One. Two, if you're if fighting with Ignifist or... in, because of ATRs. It doesn't have to hit you a lot, but you're going into the fight down health or the lucky track chance or whatever. That's RNG, but it happens so frequently when you're saying you have a lower chance. But when you skew the numbers of you are getting hit by ATRs all the freaking time, even the lower percent chance feels so high because you're getting hit by so many ATRs consistent. I have never, as a collie, been on a front in a tank without getting hit by an ATR. And I know for uh, a fact... Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me explain uh, me out. Let me, get, let me get it all out. Now, that being said, with the flask, and this is how it feels, you don't have to hit to get the track. And then when you have the Ignifist, even on a rear hit, you bounce. You have struggles. You like, And when you do hit... The chance to disable something or get it tracked or anything is so small with the Ignifist. And then to also, you get to rapidly throw your flask even at 18 meters, which, to be fair, our Ignifist is only like 20. We get a bounce chance, we have to hit, and we don't get auto-equip. So, again, like, oh, yeah. that's where I'm I very mean, strugglesome, I'm not you know, I... I struggle to feel sympathy for wardens in that regards because it it's so much more extra shit you have to do 
to get you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know you agree the flash versus the Igni fist is it's horrendously horrible I mean, difference. My standpoint is my my standpoint is that there's like on, on both sides there's things to be addressed. Like Igni should be auto equipped, but obviously with a delay so that you cannot just in, uh, empty your entire uh, inventory in two seconds, right? And um, like Igni fist needs some adjustments, but what people also forget, I know it's 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 super unrewarding. But Ignifist also has armor interaction. That's why it can bounce. Sounds stupid, but if a flask rush fails, the tank is as good as it was before. I'm not saying it happens often, but you, also, you guys also got HP buffed and so on. And Italos has 4,000 HP. That's by now a lot of flask to kill that thing. And uh, if the flask rush fails, you didn't lose a single inch of armor. Now, to be fair... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying... Go ahead. Wait, 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 go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And the Bane, again, as a colleague, you don't see it. But the threat on 40 meter distance from a Bane, for example, is significantly higher than the threat from an ATR. And as a Warden, you always feel like, again, you said it always like the ATR mass. And I remember in War 100 when I played Collie, it was always exceptionally infuriating to push trenches with tanks because they were just people always with an ATR. And I have to admit the density of Banes is not always that high, but it's still enough that you still fear every trench. And um, again, I, I'm also not a big fan of looking at every problem with the solution my tank needs to be able to solve it. And that's where infantry would come in, right? It's always a combined arms effort. And um, I mean, if we open up that... The, I mean, to give you one, uh, to give you a good one, I, I agree that on the flask, the fact that your, that your track chance is higher if you miss the tracks, and that you splash damage the tracks, that your track chance is higher is stupid. That should be fixed. But having the monopoly on high range AT as a colonial, all I can say to that, play Warden and try out getting always AT damage at 35, 40 meter range, right? So can I give you another piece with that, though? With the Bane, right? Um, we, we've talked about this um, in other regards. Um granted you know you said you brought up the the, the flash is going to take so many flasks to kill that um talos which is correct but the thing that's not killing our tanks and you, you talk about combined arms if we're bringing in combined arms when you have longer range tanks if that's your stance on it with at having the longer range at that's how we feel in our tanks as well you always are getting outranged you have to dive deep to get hit. The health bonus, again, we've talked about, Graf. The health bonus negates when tracks happen because when track tanks are out there, you're dead. So when you have a higher flask AT, longer range tanks, and more spammable AT versus longer range, higher health, and I don't even know what the benefit of the Ignifist is, like, the trade-offs are horrible because of RNG. I mean, when you're talking about the Talos having 4,000 health, yes, it can eat a lot of shots, but when it's tracked, it's already the slowest tank in the game. If you track it, it's fucking fried. It doesn't have the range to fight its way out. It's 35 meters, so it can't fight its way out. And if it's on a hill, it's gone. It's as good as gone. That tank is dead. Steel, all of it, gone. I mean, it doesn't have 40 meter range. Yeah. No, no, hill or not. Hill or not. Hill or, hill or not. Five. Again, though, it's another thing on to add to the list. And I, I know the Stygian or the STD is 40 steel, but it's a 94.5 neutered. But it's a movable 94.5 neutered. But at the other half of it, the Talos feels just as fucking useless because... It's the slowest tank in the game and 35 meters. It's not. It's... I think it's actually not. The HGD should be slower. Uh, we can look real quick. Uh, I'm quite sure that the HGD is slower. I actually would love to look at this real quick. Um, so, GG. Do you want to look up the HGD? I'll tell you the Talos. Uh, we can make that. Uh your assault tank yep so talos um maneuverability is on road is 3.94 meters a second 
off road it is 2.76 ah, then it's the same so it it so it's the exact same as an HTD with yes. 35 range yes. not MPFable like ah oh, no 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 don't compare it's I'm just know. saying bro I'm just saying HTD tailored HTD does more damage and same speed just saying yeah and the one one tool one tool can make complete scraps of all tier two related stuff and I, I'm not even going to compare them. I, I wasn't really hounded on that, but um, that was more of a slight poke. But I was just joking. Um, that being said, though, like when you have the flasks that track tracks what kills tanks, like engine, you can still get out of there. Of cases, you know, yeah. tracks unless are what kills. Uh, unless, the, uh, unless the entire line is organized, which is exceptionally rare. It's, it's always the, it's it's the always track the one. Link that yep. gets killed, right? So uh, when you have the higher uh, track chance plus longer range AT um, guns, not AT. Sorry. You have the longer range tanks. Yeah. It, it just, it feels like we're literally just so neutered because even with the high health, when it's sitting still, it doesn't matter how much health it has. Everyone's going to blast the shit out of it. And again, they're going to not let you do it. They're going to keep throwing f more flash at your ass as you're trying to rep. So it's like, I, I'm not saying again I want anything nerfed on the on the wardens and I we went to balance because we started talking about how this is all gonna <laughs> the reason we started talking about balance guys is because it it's it's it gonna it's gonna there. be horrible now guys like all of the things we're saying it's not being addressed in the patch and with the upscale of everything whether we like it or not on how things are gonna be made it's gonna be horrible when the wardens get unlimited mats essentially that's what this is yeah, yeah. so all these things i'm also, talking no about asked, right you know it's, it's so insane to me like no one asked to have five times more comps i just don't understand it like it's work. it's gonna it's safe. gonna struggle bro and i i'm i'm not again i'm not saying i want warden nerfs i want kali buffs and i want balanced buffs and i want sliders i don't want a pendulum I think the war or the the game devs do a pendulum swing. Six wars this way, six wars this way, and it's horrible. And I feel like, uh, you know, I want to start talking to more wardens about it. And Graf and I don't agree on everything, but at the end of the day, a lot of things we do. I think the silver hand right now horrible position. I, I think. Yeah, it's because of the free man, because of the third man. It, you know, it, right? it's it's and, a third person in uh, a tank, and that's. You know, it's like, well, it's, you know, when you have a M, uh, it's so funny. The wardens call it MPTs. Uh, someone said, you know, how to catch a warden alt. They call it MPT. <laughs> and that's, uh, I've Dude, caught that joke now. So I, 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 I learned building uh, back in war 100 was the first time when I interacted with building. Right. And I learned from all the colleagues how building worked. Mm -hmm. And apparently I didn't know that either, right? And then we joined. Then we joined uh, the ward building Discord, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we used all these phrases that we learned. <laughs> and like two seconds later, an admin was asking, "Ah, yeah, and you guys are actually verified because you're only using colonial language." That's so <laughs> funny. Like it's so funny. But that being said, it like is. again, out of all of this, like all of us want to have an enjoyable, competitive game. Um, yeah, and you also want enemies to fight, right? Exactly. Like, like, if, if the game is in a bad state the entire time. I mean, I think right now it's a bit destructive of what stories I've heard. Um, sometimes from... I mean, it's always stories, right? Maybe it's all a big psyop. But uh, ward pop, uh, like uh, vet population on colonials, if it's true that no one is actually there... It's bad. Um, no, I'll tell you firsthand. Uh, I mean... It's bad. Like, horrendous. Yeah. Like I mean, there are and no I mean, vets. We already had, yeah, yeah, I mean, we already have the issue that right now that uh, there's certain. That's, uh, how do I call this? Um, people build up proficiencies, right? And in my opinion, ROC operations is always one of those things because it it integrates everything, right? You need to have a good coordination between regiments because next to no regiment in itself can do a successful uh, ROC operation. Hmm. And so you need to coordinate with other vets for it. You need to have good frontline control. 
you need to have good builders, good infrastructure and everything and it, it requires good production as well. And, uh, there's a lot of things that need to go right for this operation to succeed without losing RSCs after it, right? And um, I, I, I just cannot remember the last time that Collies actually pulled it off good on a, uh, on a worthy target. And my issue is even if things are good, it will, it will still take a lot of wars until that's equalized. And um, I think what also this update, did, this update didn't address anything. And if I would be a dissatisfied colonial vet right now, which I can understand, I'm not I'm not pretending that the game is perfectly balanced and some issues f maybe also feel worse than it is. And it doesn't matter if it is bad or not. If you don't feel the the itch to play, if you don't feel it, which is completely fine. But um, there's no incentive. Uh, at least that's what, when I saw the entire patch, I, I thought like, okay, if I dis if I am a dissatisfied colonial right now, there's uh, and I stopped playing and I waited for the update, there's no incentive for me to now start playing again. I mean, I think what the biggest issue is right now is um, exactly what you said. There is no incentive to being a collie right now. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't say that in general. Like, well, me, I'm meaning, like, I, as a vet coming back, like, that is dissatisfied with balance or dissatisfied with the way the game is being handled and maintained and the changes that it feels like the devs care and don't care about. I mean, if you don't like the game balance, which I have not met a colonial yet that really feels good about it, um, to be fair, I haven't fed a, met a lot of college wardens, but that love it. But I have gotten so much more like, I will hear it out, copium from collies than I ever hear of wardens. Like, I don't know what I mean, that is. I, 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 I don't I, think that you can I, generalize I a thousand that... players. I don't think you can no, generalize no. a thousand players as copium. No. But when a majority of people feel the same way, is it is it that psyop bullshit or is this have some girth and truth behind it? And when you start diving numbers and you start getting first person accounts, when you start getting all these things, like, you know, I don't want to yeah. say that the wardens, because I don't want to generalize a thousand people either, but I don't want the wardens to feel like, you know, the same thing that they get neutered just for the health of the game. But at the other half, if things don't change or at least get heard or explained or talked about or at least addressed, you know, I, I feel like there is a rallying cry for something like a boycott or – and everyone's like, that'll never fucking happen. And I'm not advertising a boycott. Um, I mean, but what I'm saying is time, there's a mass enough. of people – that feel the same way they don't like it and they don't like the way it's going a lot of people are going to quit until things change yeah how are things going to change back, in my opinion they will i mean in my opinion they will also come back if, if things change because this game is just highly addictive but um, if it changes though and that's what I, all the callies say yeah, it'll yeah. never happen the last time the last time the last time i remember shit being that bad was when the warden had the losing streak between 95 and 100 mm -hmm. right um there were a lot of things also not right with the game. The, but, but let's be honest, back then wars were also way shorter, especially 79 and up to 99. Uh, basically, were the length of one war now. So the state of the game since it's been that bad is longer. And the warden, it's not a warden win streak, right? It's always interrupted by a singular collie win. But uh, uh, like we can all, uh, we can all agree that it's it's an exceptionally long phase of warden dominance at least in regards of wins even though i think we can also agree that some of those wins uh, i i don't want to say gifted because that would undermine the amount of effort that would put in but some of those were exceptionally close let's put it that way i, I think um, what the better way to put it is one side got burnt out <laughs> yeah, yeah, Collies. but, but um, I would I would say uh, there, there is some wars that the wardens end up winning, but the collies had a lot of good time in it. Mm -hmm. Like, and uh, I can agree like with that on too. the winning side and not eat, uh, uh, not eating shit, right? Like people always bring up this. It's been uh, since this update, uh, uh, collies only won uh, uh, seventy days of war, and uh, wardens won eight hundred days or something. I don't know, right? 
And they always assume that because it's a warden win, that wardens won the entirety of the war, which is not true. Like, if you eat shit, you eat shit. And it's also not that fun. And I mean, for example, in the update war, 108, right? I mean, being a warden in the East wasn't fun. You ate shit the entire time, right? I'm not talking about the, like how good or bad the despawn concrete was and all of that, but wardens ate shit hard. On the other side, warden restaurant was like a steam happy front and everything went well. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's always. I think the uh, biggest. When I think about certain wars, they were. Yeah. I think the biggest regards in it, though, is not necessarily um, winning or losing. Like, my best example is Last War, right? When we had you guys push down to, like, I think 12 hexes or some shit like that. And yeah, then yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie yeah. happened, and then it was just <laughs> a fucking flood. It Charlie felt like happened. a flood, dude. Charlie happened and it felt like a flood. It felt like a flood yeah. for the warden cause. And it, again, population I mean, is the fun, biggest. Right? That's the thing. Population is it's, the biggest winner. And I felt like that yes. war was stolen from Collies, to be honest. Like, I think if, if, if Charlie would have stayed the way it was, because it, it probably would have won. And, you know, so there are things that, that go into that as well, you know, because then it was definitely one. We started going from 50 second timers down to 20 down to eventually yeah. with the end of the war to five. And so, right. But if, if, you know, if it, people it, talk balance and pop, right. Like, like people always come yeah, no one is playing Collie, but in the majority of cases, especially the first half of the war, wards are also fighting the uphill, right. It, it, we are always under pop see, in the but, beginning. Even with that, though, that even kind of proves that balance is kind of horrible. Fuck. It's not. Yeah, that's very through, horrible. Through the wall progression. Exactly. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, when you talk about, like, early game and we have, like, when the thing is the game has an in-game balance with, you know, queue times and or queues and um, spawn timers. And, you know, at the beginning of the war, I've heard that a lot of wardens don't even log in, or if they do, they're in the back hexes conking and scrooping. That's it. They hardly ever have actual people like dedicated to the front unless shit's really getting bad and they're losing a lot of ground quickly. Um, or they just don't play, don't log on. And then we get massive queue timers and then divots roll out or ATHD rolls out. Bam. Q comes back. I mean, I Again, one of the things because I read it on I, I read it on Reddit, but um, by the way, it's not a strategy, right? It's a it's a symptom because early war is so shit. See, but the Cullies can't so benefit from that. That that's kind of really shitty. Uh, How, what I, do you I you want us to not log in? Wars. You want us to not log in when the game's fucking like been no, on for a no, month? No, like, no, but in a lot of wars, in a lot of wars, you guys make exceptional early game wins. Like you get a lot of territory. That's mm -hmm. undeniable. Like, like looking at the last war, you had us down to F 11 hexes. And we didn't even had anything conk busting co attacked. Like, you guys pushed us all the way through, right? Until you hit concrete. And, um... And 46 I mean, storm cannons. Again, uh, and, and, then, and then Charlie ha ended, right? And all they see, if they have to select a faction, because Charlie is the default for the new guys, and then they are so... Then they are said, well, the server is going to end now go to the other server and all they see is colleagues are blinking red because they are full and they are getting set go one right so i mean that's what it is right and then it got equalized the amount of pop and yeah so i mean last war and i actually, i would put as not really even like an actual um like pop problem because i mean it was but what i'm saying is like charlie ending should not Having a mass influx of players because another server got shut down should not be the general basis for balance because that's a one-off thing and that was the decisions by the devs. If all those players were in from the beginning, the war wouldn't even been like that. It would have been completely different from the get-go. I mean, when you have a mass influx of players come in um, because of a shard getting shut down, that's not the natural order of things. That's a mass, like... I don't even know a fucking... I mean, it's a third party, essentially. It's a, it's a fucking third party. Two people have been fighting forever, I mean, just, and you get a third person coming in to help one guy. 
win. It, it's just say, just say, just say it's a one-off thing. But if you look at it, it happens with some regularity. Like shards getting closed happens with regularity with the big updates, right? Eventually, you have to close it. And I mean, another session of Charlie would not have been healthy either, right? And uh, you have Steam sales. Like the legendary 30-32 war was largely won because of Steam sales. New players log in, and what do they see? Wards underpopped, and then they click on it, right? So actually, somewhat of the similar story, just more, more extreme back then. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but, at, uh, the, at the end of it, like, population is the number one balancing factor, because... Uh, population you, and morale, yeah. And morale is people again, right? Like And morale is also yeah. balance, the enjoyment of the game. You know, you don't... To a certain I'll, degree, to a certain mean, degree, I would agree. I, I, I mean... It's uh, not fun getting you your for example, last teeth war, kicked in. Last 24. War is a good example for me. Right? Last war is a good example for me. Like, uh, the first nukes for Wardens were very disencouraging because uh, sometimes we lost, I think, by 20 minutes or something. Like, we just we just lost the nuke race by 20 minutes for in one example and so on. And uh, we lost it to, to battleships and so on, which felt very frustrating, right? It was the first time we actually interacted with battleships in that regard and so on. It felt very disencouraging, and morale-wise, it was an issue. But then, no one capitalized on those new gains, right? And eventually, the morale negative went into a positive. Like, yeah, okay, let's give us another nuke. Yeah, yeah nothing will happen, right? And when the na when the last nuke dropped, it got even that far. Like, you see the nuke drop in one of the videos, right? The nuke that landed south of uh, Saltbrook Channel. You see the nuke drop, and while the animation is still running. Of the nuke, you already see the flatbed with concrete driving in, like as as if no one gives a fuck, you know. So, so I, I think um, well, what I'm talking about is um, so let's let's put into perspective a regiment that has built um their first BT. Um, yeah. they lose it due to X, Y, Z. Um, again, I'm not going to get into the details of why it's frustrating to fight warden stuff. You have different reasons to fight Kali stuff. That yeah, being said, yeah. all of it's annoying, but when you have one side that continuously dominates a section of the game and it's like, why am I even fucking trying anymore? That's how it feels to be a Kali sometimes. And then the other half of it is, if we're a horde faction, it really sucks ass to be the diving faction and to die and then have to go spend another half hour getting another tank ready. Oh, 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 don't get me on that design. Like, in my opinion, the idea to start that way is hor horrible. And I think we can all agree that it also doesn't work anymore. The Badish is a super good W tank, but what are you pressing W into? Tank lines. Like, these tanks were all designed in an era when tanks actually had scarcity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you supposed to flank? Look at Umbral. You, you play an Umbral daily. You have, a, you have a tank line, right? If you look at the Umbral map, you have a tank line that goes from this fucking forest all the way up to Foundry, and it goes north and south, and we roll each other the entire time. Sometimes the Wardens roll the entire Collie tank line, but then you roll the entire uh, Warden tank line, Nothing changes, right? There is no flank opportunity. Like, all these flank tanks are not getting used. There's no highwaymans. There's no bone wagons. There's no Badish gameplay there. And when um, we have to... tanks can basically not work there. So, my whole, my right, whole then, thing with then, um, flank tanks... The idea, honestly, of a flank tank in Foxhole sounds wonderful. But in practice, yeah, but it hardly ever it, works. It doesn't work. And so, again, and when they're always like, like just flank, bro... Like, it actually, like, I actually get high blood pressure, dude. Like, I actually get mad because it's like you are not using your eyes to understand what happens day in and day out. The veterans know yeah, I mean, what wins. And I mean, you can look at the tanks that are getting played, right? But, like, colleagues don't like the Badish because it doesn't work on the meta right now. I mean, the stats say it's a good tank. Like, everything at the Badish screams it's a good tank. But it just doesn't work at the meta right when now. The tracks happen, when tracks happen, when tracks happen, turrets happen, or engines happen, and you're fighting tanks with Hivo or farther range than you, nah. And especially when it's multiple, nah. You just get fucking slammed. Also, you cannot flank. 
right? No, Th this you can't. You like can't play the. Like, I mean, you f what flank into fucking AI? Like, I mean, I just don't understand where people are thinking that there's open field fights twenty four seven. Like, you're always yeah. playing I mean, around when AI. Are, when there are these tanks work, right? You always see it in the end of the war. Funnily enough, that's my perspective. Like when people stop to log in, right? Like the the end of the war, like the last week, let's say, always feels characteristic, characteristically quite different from the rest of the war. And that's when you actually can see uh, stuff like bone wagons work, mm -hmm. because you actually find isolated tanks, right? That have no infantry support, just driving up to a front that is also not well populated, right? And um, that's when you actually see the. The, the possibility of those tanks work i'm gonna i'm just gonna say it like but this when both sides yeah but if both sides are locked in those tanks doesn't work they don't, don't they don't work the way, the way they are intended to work well you really see it this entire philosophy has issues and to be honest with you i'm not saying you know you guys don't have a problem but to be honest it's worse for us too as colleagues because not only that but again we don't have good moving at like portable very well you could argue the venom which i can even agree with you sure but we have very limited I mean, the bait is as encumbersome as the bone saw right like, it, yeah it's it's dog shit. it's shit defensive it's both. only defensive period like i yeah same with the bone saw exactly it's quite hard to use offensively as well it's super it's super heavy right and you can only carry like three shells and I if mean, that the limit of encumberment as well yeah if that right. and if it's raining ha! <laughs> good fucking yeah, luck let, bud let's not start on rain yeah, yeah let's not fuck start on rain. that's yeah. not even going there. but that being said i think what collies need like really fucking bad again i'm not coming at this as a biased standpoint i try to stay as unbiased as i can while also not getting railed for being a collie realistically <laughs> the collies need a solid line fighter not not to be overpowered not to be but truthfully and here was my idea that i've been thinking about um so the wardens have the heavy tank destroyer right yeah. they they get a lot of very hard hitting um very you know just long range or they just fucking hit like a semi truck there's two ways to combat that one don't get in a tank two get a bigger tank what i think would be cool for the colonials is to replace the bardiche or make the bardiche a variant and give us a heavy tank not a heavy tank destroyer not a heavy you know super tank but just a heavy tank and i mean this is in a tank that can soak shots it's not can it's but hold on do that. but it give it 40 meter range give it just 40 meter range make it a 40 mil and just be able to like even just even to buff it up a little more like give it a uh, 20% less track rate or some like something to make it stand out from everything else and something that can actually not win against an HGD, but not get fucking too tapped by it. I want something that can drive up, send a 40 at it, and I want it still be outranged by the outlaw. I want the outlaw to be its strength. I want the silver hand to out DPS it when it when the silver hand hits with both. I want the HTD to feel very like that's supposed to be its target, but I want a tank that can sit there. If you had, you know, a line of these things, they're not going to be doing a shitload of damage, but they're not going to get fucking steamrolled. They're going to be able to, you know, at least forward backward with the HTD and they're not going to get just fucking, you know, and maybe, you know, that's a bad take. And maybe I don't have a great idea for it. There's a million ideas. But what I'm wanting, I want to go outside the box. I want it to be a slower, heavily armored, minimal armament. You know, I want essentially like 
a fucking Tiger One, you uh, know? Uh, with the with the exception with the exception of your forty millimeter, that's what you already have. I don't know what statistic you, you need to be proved. This thing has forty meter range is essential. The Take the MG box. away, give it forty meter range. The fact that it has to yeah, dive yeah. five this, more this, meters. This is the only one. That's it then. Th that's the only thing that you're lacking. Everything else it already has. Like uh, uh, again, Colonial tanks throughout the entire board. Like they all, like next to all of them have less tracks chance than what tanks. And the Badish in its uh, effective health gets exceptionally close to our battle tank. So like, it's, it's always again though, but when you don't, chance. when you have to dive it. And again, yeah. Flask having such a high flash rate or track chance, we need something that has 40. Like, I've said it a million times. Give the Bardish 40 meter range. Fucking mint. Fucking mint. Like, if it had that alone, that tank would be strong. You would still get out DPS'd by uh, Silverhand. You would still get outranged yeah, by the doesn't. outlaw. It you doesn't. would. What do you mean? It doesn't though. It, it does not. It does, it does not get out DPS. It has, it has higher DPS, DPS than the Silverhand if it gets into range. I don't think and so. The Silverhand DPS only works at. It does. It has four second reload on the 68. The 40 millimeter is inferior to the 68. You have to. You shoot the same. The reload duration is a 5.5. The reload duration is 5.5 okay. on okay. a. Now hold on. Okay. But okay, let, let me just get this out. Really let me, let me, um, that's on the 12, seven It's 3.5 on the main gun, 35 meters. And it takes two seconds to fire. So it's a 5.5. It's 5.5 now. Okay. okay. But that, with that being on said, it's eight. but it's double gun. Yeah, but it's a 40 millimeter regardless it's a 40 mil so no 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 there's a difference there's the damage mitigation into it i know that but chance. what i'm saying is the fact that you can hit us with a 40 and then have the same damage output with a 68 we're we're yeah, we're, we're going it's into alpha another it's alpha damage. but again we're going into a fight already damaged that's twice the amount of chance to get tracked, turreted, or whatever. Plus, yeah, at, at right now... Le no, 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 no. This is again, I, okay, hold on, oh, hold on. We're trying to... You assume, you're, you assume, you're trying to hit you the assume, silver hand. No, 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 no. You always assume you get penetrated and tracked. Assume that you do the same with the first shot. The, the silver hand only has two guns at 35 meter range as well. It's the same deal. It's forty five it's forty and a forty uh, forty and a thirty five. Yeah, yeah, the forty millimeter at forty meters. But I mean, it, 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 okay. But to be the thing to be that way though is you're still getting that forty millimeter damage on top. On, on the so tank, so nearly, like, again, again Badish, we're trying to compare the two different chance. things. We're we're trying to compare two two yes, different things. Of course. The silver hand is supposed that's to be equivalent thing. to the falchion, because that's the tech tree it comes out uh, at. Then what? I then what know, do we have on the that's... HTD? Because I would even yes, compare our that's... LTD to the outlaw because it's the, the it's the range game. Like it's not though. Like, um, then you got to compare the is, HCD to the HV or the ATHC. I think that's not how it works. No, 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 no. You have to, I, I personally think that's not how it works. You cannot look at singular tanks and say this is supposed to be the counterpart for X and Y. Then you have to look at it when because the tech comes out. That's the only. That's no, the only way to look have, at no, it. No, no, no. You have to look at. You have to look at problems that you need to solve, and you need to look at your arsenal, and you have to ask yourself, can my arsenal fix the problem? We have nothing to deal like, with HCDs. Nothing. Nothing. We have nothing that can outdo what the HCD can do. 75% HIVO on a 68. It moves like dog shit. It's MPFable and hits harder than our Talos. And the best armor in the game. It, we have uh, nothing yeah. close to that. Like nothing close to that at all if you're going to talk about ltd having range on it doesn't even compare to the damage or health or armor 
It actually is comparable health, which is a light tank versus a heavy tank destroyer. But regardless, we have nothing that combats the HCD. As soon as the HCD comes out, Spatha having advantages, out of the door. It gets fucking smoked. Talos can't reach it without getting fucking smoked. Bardish gets hammered by the time it can get a normal 68 shot out. Like, or the, it's going to bounce or bat. Like, regardless of it, it can't. We have nothing that can okay, compete okay. with it, though. Nothing. Okay, okay, okay. Now I, no, no, I have a trap for you. Now I'm curious. So you would say the LTD is not a pr appropriate counter? The LTD is not an appropriate counter to the HTD. I agree on that, by the way. But um, that's your standpoint, right? But, okay. Now, I'm going to explain this, though. No, because no, no, you're no, no, never no, no, going to... No, 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 yes. No, no. I, I don't think it's a viable source to fight each other. Nope. I don't think what the LTD is a way... Have... Okay. What can we do against the BTD? Uh, you're super heavy. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, okay, regardless of that, huh? the HT. Okay, but to be honest, I think three HTDs could kill a BTD. If you're gonna be flat out honest HTD. about that, I, I think nah. if you're gonna if you're gonna also now you're comparing a battle tank chassis to a MPFable tank chassis. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah, what yeah, I did yeah, earlier. True, true. You can't do that, and that's where it's like, dude, there's nothing that touches the HTD. and I, I'm the like. Stitcher, maybe, but it, it's I mean, not it movable. Have... It's it, your it, the maneuverability of it. it. If it was the old push gun variant, I would agree with you. But as the way it sits right now, sitting still, uh, it's Stitcher man, it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, yeah, it's a weird thing. A, it's a weird thing. Again, in general, heavy heavy AT is in a weird spot. On one hand, it's borderline busted. And on the other hand, it's 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 borderline it's useless. Touching. Yeah, it's it's, it's a uh, it's, it's in such a weird spot. If you so get hit by it, that's it's where busted. I'm getting at. In if all honesty, we um, can deal with silver hands. We can deal with outlaws. You can deal with falchions. You can deal with spathas. Like, I I just I have tried so hard to play the game as like joyfully as I can. But, dude, like, when you see HTDs on the front, it has to be your number one priority, and you're gonna get fucking rolled, dude. Because they are so, like, the fact that they hit harder than a Talos, and they have the best armor as an MPFable thing, bro, like, there's just, I, I hate to sound like the copium, like, smoke up my copium, but, bro, like, there's just nothing yeah. we can do, bro. I mean Nothing. There's I'm nothing. I'm not saying it's balanced or so on. Right, right. I'm not saying it's balanced, but your kid has answers to it. I'm not. I'm not saying that they are fair in the way that they leverage on it, right? But can um, we kill them and do they I die? They, yes. Do they have chances to die yeah. depending on how that HD plays? Yeah. Yes. But most I mean, of the, the time, the devs vision, the devs vision was Badish versus HTD, which is a weird comparison, right? Because they feel completely different spots right the one is a is a defined frontline tank and the other one is like a flank brawler weird i think the, it's the a badish town fighter not fast enough i yeah, think the, badish, the issue for me is with the badish it's not fast enough to be a flanker but it's also so beefy that you actually want it to be in the front line it's 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 it feels like a tank that is not well designed it either needs more speed it loses tankiness because the DPS, if you get in range, is super good. Like, no one complains about that, right? And a commander with a 12 foot 7, it's all good. Right? And no I will say, that. your guys' MGs on all your fucking vehicles, that needs to change. Those suck ass. I played in a fucking outlaw I mean, MG. Wanna, Holy shit. That was dog shit. Uh, oh, my if you God. If open up that argument, I think you will lose. Because uh, if, if you... If you start that argument, you have to assume that the outlaw is a free man tank. No, I'm just saying right. though, the outlaw then, MG was dog shit, bro. I'm not even joking. Oh, that thing was fucking oh, dog yeah, shit. Oh. I was it saying. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah, I said it was. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's dog shit, bro. Like, oh, I said oh, that oh, you yeah, guys yeah. need a buff on your fucking ah, okay. so, your so, so, MGs so, 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 on your tank. I, I, yeah. All your tank MGs <laughs> need a massive fucking 
up in accuracy plume or bloom or they need to hit way harder for how inaccurate they chieftain, are uh, chieftain mg luckily weirdly enough the chieftain mg is good it's uh, i think it's also our only high velocity and it has no bloom yeah but it's like know, our it's scorpion a in, a in a tank line well and that's the uh, thing like, it's you it's so weird right? the thing is but do you expect us like and honestly here's the other thing we only have two chassis that are you could quote unquote say the Kerneshka is the chassis, but you also don't count the divot as a chassis or the iron hide when you're talking tanks, because it's not your like. I mean, but I mean, you have to use the LTD again. That, the that's tank, that's right? where I sit as like you have to count it only for the LTD, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. again, that's where it's like it's locked behind facility. And it just whatever. I'm not even gonna get to that. But really, it's not counting light tanks except for the LTD. We have two chassis versus your three. Uh, MPT, MPT uh, Bardiche. Bardiche. That's yeah. it. The only other tank that yeah, you can uh, count as a tank is our ballista chassis, 12.7 IST. Is it good? Yes. Does it block up a hole on a front line? Yes. Does it have no defensive <laughs> armament other than killing flaskers? No. Is it the slowest fucking piece of glorified chunk of metal I love? Y yeah, but God I mean, it forbid. Got as well, right? With the with the with the ballista speed buff, it got buffed as well, right? With more HP gets on. Uh, kind of. HP, now I will say, next war you're gonna see vetted out or vetted ISTs again because uh, they went back yeah, to C mats. It's, it's C mats again, right? Now it's that's again. fucking yeah, mint again. Those. When you can double vet those things, fucking mint. When they're base, they I just. Remember, uh, I remember they always worked really well with the old Stigian because mm -hmm. they could hold the 94. The shells. Five. Yep. Yeah, and I have yeah, a whole doctrine. Like I have a whole doctrine for yeah. that. Two ISTs surrounding one Stygian, and I made the fucking super heavy we deserve. And that's what uh, that was what <laughs> I called it. And uh, it was uh, did awesome. You, did you see? Did, did, did you already test our ward equivalent in depth oh, perspective? Oh man, fuck that, the half, dude. Fucking the, the, the half track with the two storm rifles. I know, dude. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, yeah. I think I think we can both agree the HCD is the king of killing tanks. Yeah, I th think th th that's what it's made for, right? Yeah, but that's, the that's thing what is, it's made for. if it, that's it, the it case, nothing, the, the issue is yeah, exactly it does it so good. And uh, it, it has one weakness, it is getting flanked. The issue is, there are so many tanks that it cannot get flanked, so it does lose its own, the only weakness it has, right? That's that's it. I mean, that's that's really it. And Which, it's... which means that the issue, the issue might not be in the tank, the issue might be in the economy, right? And I think actually the solution, like, if you think about it, right now we always have, all hexes are full, everything is acute, and we have tank tanks against tank tanks. But that's not what the vision should have been, because our tanks are more expensive. What it should have been is, like, 6 versus 10. Well, that's that what it should be. Our, tanks can, ours should be cheaper. Should be, right? It and, should be cheaper, and we and, should have and, more yeah, of them, versus are. you are way more right. expensive, exactly. and you should have less of yeah. them. And that's the way it should I mean, be, no one, but it's not. Like, like no, one would, no one would complain about the Falcon, if you could reliably flank the enemy and would always shoot at one side armor because then the tank also works the issue is if you have to frontally assault an HDD who is going to laugh at you and just give you a high velocity 68 right and you can see how your armor chips away and then you are two shot disabled right that, that's the issue and um, I personally think that uh, all the symptoms we see are actually an issue of economy and not of balance, in my personal opinion. I think actually the idea works. The issue right now is that tanks are too abundant and too cheap. Like, if, if wardens can afford to have the same amount as ta of tanks as colonials, there's something wrong. And um, I also don't want to see more tanks on the front line. I'm super scared of that because then infantry gameplay will be dog shit. And everyone will only drive around in tanks. And at night time, we have five people shooting at each other. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, to me, a lot of those symptoms that make the game super unenjoyable is the abundance of resources. Well, and, and again, uh, like, even when you're talking about that, like, I would be okay with 
Warden AT being as as great as it is if we had a 10 to 6 gameplay. But the fact that we're fighting 10 on 10 plus you're at an AT, yeah. it, it just it that's fucks us, man. Yeah. And plus already yeah, being as cheap, like that would actually make a lot of sense, you know, if the tanks Batish, imagine imagine the Batish, you had you had Batishes on the flank, right? And when your tank then presses W the Batishes can constantly shoot in the side. Oh, it'd be nuts. Like, yeah, it it'd be work. busted. Yeah, yeah, it would be busted. Like some, like it would work. Then, like, but as I said, you cannot flank a tank line that doesn't stop. If the tank line is continuous, there is no flanking, and then these well, tanks don't work, right? Oh. I would also wish, for example, like I mean, and that would also make like highwaymen's work again. It would make uh, bone laws work again. There's so many tanks that could work again, right? Yeah, I think in a weird spot that is not enjoyable. you're not gonna like this graph, but I, I think this would also help with this. I think if all tanks had to have an engineer slot to be their loader as well, so you have more people in could tanks um, yep. to make them yep. functional, yep. I think that would could work. I agree. I think that would help a you lot. Have to do something. So. Uh, like I, I I agree on like my I, we somehow have to decrease the amount of tanks. I think that also would instantly improve improve uh, infantry quality of life. Like infantry complaining about getting sniped by tanks, like no one actually wants inaccuracy in tanks. Like that sounds super annoying with the way yeah, that Fox is getting played, right? Fuck that. Like it's not War Thunder. Like 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 th this entire idea is horrible. But it only comes to this point. Because infantry has to face like 20 tanks. And the tanks can always shoot at infantry because there's enough barrels, right? It, it just feels like the entire economy is uh, problematic. And now coming back to the update, they want to... They wanna, Times it by they five. Crack it on crack well, and that's why I'm five, like, this is... war is going to be horrible for the Collies, to be honest. Like, Dude, I, I, I really hope they don't put it live. Like, we already talked about it in our coalition about it. And the consensus is that we don't even touch facilities. It's so horrible, man. Like, if, if it goes live exactly the way it is right now, we don't even touch facilities and we will completely abuse MPF tanks. And we have to, I mean, we have to produce chief tanks, but it's with the, like with the Spatha, they only cost AM1 and AM4. You will always manage to get those. It works. They're like, especially for a siege tank that is not required to be a frontline tank. You, you know, like, you will always manage to get those. But I really hope they don't get this update live. Like it's, it's so wrong in its idea as well. Like I, I mean, how is it for you? Because I'm curious. Because the issue is more on the college side, I think, because you guys are so reliant on tank upgrades. And like one of my facility guys always had the example that the main issue right now is, if you open the map, the UI does not tell you where do you find a public facility, right? Well, All it's not even just that. You don't know if. The <laughs> Just because there's five times the amount of mats doesn't mean there's going to be five times the amount of production or there's going to be five times, and yeah, I'm meaning yeah. no, in no, tanks. I, absolutely. And there's not going to be five yeah, times I mean, the amount it's... of um, moving said tanks. I mean, absolutely. the fact that we yeah, can't I'm crate them, yeah, like yeah. you're talking about hundreds of trips now to equal what you guys are going to be able to do in half that. Like, yeah, yeah. like I said, if you had an 18-cart train... Filled with um, MPFs, which is by three, that's 50, what is it, 54 compared to 18. So, hold on, 54 divided by 18, it takes three trip. I'm a fucking idiot, I could have just, mental math, What I just literally could have reversed it, it takes three trips to one. It's three trips of ours to one of yours. And yeah. that's um, not talking about ammo on the front. That's not talking about shirts. No, I mean, that is just tanks alone. You the, When you do one tank run of however many, whatever variation of Outlaw, Silverhand, HTD you want, you can now come with 18 shipping containers of ammo, shirts, Gas mask, filter, da 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 So, it, I mean, it, yeah, it fucking adds up. And I don't mind you guys having better non-facility tanks, but I do give a fuck that we get screwed in. We have to rely on facility and driving that shit up to the front. 
Like yeah, like one. What we also talked about, right? Like one big leverage would already be that um, you put the crate on the pet and you upgrade the entire crate, right? And then you have a crate of spathers. That would already alleviate a lot of the pain. But they were me, saying it feels like there's like two. We want to upgrade, or we want to just be able to crate stuff at seaports. Like even even doing that, you know, you're still having the logistical yeah, struggle, but of getting them to the yeah. seaport one by one, but that's okay because you have five minute craft time. That wouldn't be a big deal. But when you, I guess, I you know, guess. that way, at least it could be somewhat balanced because. I like the idea of, yeah. yeah I, it, it, it would at least even up the logistics game a bit. Right. And right now I feel like there's two solutions to, uh, to the problem. Either, um, Either like collie tank performance is getting the same as one tank performance throughout the board. Yep. Like you guys just get our tanks basically, and we have to increase the cost that they match, or we uh, or we solve the initial problem that we had with the abundance of resources. It's one of the that, other. That, like that, I that said, I would prefer. There's a million different ways to yeah. skin the cat, but the devs have to talk to us. The devs have to watch this podcast. Yeah, yeah. The There's devs so have to. So and the solutions. players all yeah, are saying nothing. them, and even. I'm wanting to now broadcast them. I haven't got a message from the devs. I haven't got anything from the devs that they even give a fuck about my podcast, which, to be honest, it's not a big podcast yet, but... Bitch, I'm trying to talk to you. Devs? Trying to talk? I am trying to talk to you! Motherfucker, you're gonna make me grab my gun. I'm just kidding. I love you. I wouldn't say that. Um, that being said, though, devs. Fucking A. We love the game. Let's work on it. Talk to us. We love your game. Uh, Let's work on it. Uh, All right. Now question two. Lol. <laughs> Great progression. <laughs> mm -hmm. You like that? So much to talk about, huh? <laughs> I mean, we kind of went through two and three. Um, what would you like to see yeah, changed? Like change? uh, I mean, we kind of covered that as well, right? That's like, why I said... Bit, like, like I, I think we covered that quite well like um i want the logistics game to be more equal for you guys um i would also like like on, on the other side right ah oh, man that needs to change i think it's, it's it would be fair if you just put the crate on the pad and you just click the button you pay the resources and 25 minutes later the entire crate is upgraded um i would just wish for way more communications I don't need more updates. I just want to know what they are cooking on, so that yes. we can avoid this entire facility, this entire facility fiasco. That at least that's what well, it feels like, right? I think if you could, if you could tell them earlier what the community thinks about it, they could like. I get the idea. <laughs> that's the worst thing, you know. Are you in my I, I stream? I get the idea. They, Graph, are you in my like, stream? Like as a solo man. What? No. Are you in my stream? Uh, I gotta no. tell you something after you're done with the solo man thing. Ah, okay. Like, um, I, I completely understand what they are going for. As a beginner, facilities are super in a super weird spot right now. But I think they completely approach it from the wrong side. This forcing public and so on, it's, it's not going to work. It never works, right? Like, regiments just, they, they always have to, even us, right? We have the big BT selling program and so on, but we can only start it if our regimental needs and our coalition needs are done. And then we can start to open up, right? And enforcing it on regiments, it will only create toxicity. They will wall off. It will be shoot, shot on sight behavior. People, mm. people will always find solutions. They always did. And um, I just think it goes in this wrong direction. Like people are already there's people doing nothing else but providing public spathers. They don't get anything from it. They barely get comments for it or anything. Like it, it, and. Like, people are already altruistic in this game, and regiment people are also re altruistic, but only within their own regiment, but it's, it's, it still covers a lot of people, and, man, I would just wish that, I would just wish that devs would communicate more with us, to, like, like, for example, they would say, okay, we have the issue that beginners and solo man doesn't feel that facilities are good, give us some feedback, like, what is your input, right? I, I just feel like they never ask a single word about the update, like, the, before that. Like, I, I have no idea. It's so weird. They didn't ask a single yeah. call either. Um, yeah, I think so as well. 
Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, the thing that um, could really solve this is stop using Reddit as a way to balance the game and listen to your um, listening to your community. Actually. You know, they can say what they, they want. They, already... they can say what they yeah, want. Yeah. Doesn't mean they don't. Um, that's true. That being said, um, if that's not true, then you need to give us a way to access and talk to you directly. Yeah, it's very one way right now, right? With the feedback, it's, you never it's know if they... horrible. Like, yeah. we can't talk to you guys. That, that yeah. Literally, the foundation of this podcast is to get a dev on stream to talk. <laughs> like, that is yeah. literally the end goal of this podcast, other than to just get the community together and show that, you know, green and fucking blue can get along and hate each other figuratively I mean, um i mean as much as we hate each other we need each other as well right? i mean so i want to fucking shoot you you want to shoot me we got to have someone to shoot yeah. you know at, at the end of the day yeah. we're all people playing the same game whether what side you factionally pick or whatever you like the game i like i like the game you like let's work on it let's talk and things out probably for the same reasons as well exactly right? most like, probably we like like and so yeah. at the end of this guys you know what I really want is a is a dev team that is dedicated <laughs> a dev team that is dedicated to its community just as much as they are to their game. Because without a community, you guys don't have a game. And I'm gonna be honest, and this might I be a little like blunt. Uh, I, I I feel like yeah. they're not they're giving us the cold shoulder on a lot of things. And yeah, this might hurt my this uh, might hurt my chances on getting you guys on here, but my personal opinion is you are not talking enough to your community they that did in the past I, and they, that's the problem i time. know they did in the past yeah. i know they used to have that weekly thing where you would find a fish or whatever and give it somewhere and then they'd have a dev float out of the it was an easter egg you could do and talk to a dev that was a thing of the past yeah. that chamberlain told me about and it's like where is that I get that this game is getting bigger, and I get that you're trying to get Anvil, and I get that you're trying to get a bigger engine, but dude, we're the one paying for this game. We're the ones that love this game. You need to also talk to us. You know, I. You, you I mean, can't I leave us in the dark. It, right? I mean, you know, you can't leave in us the in the dark. They can do it the way they want to. I mean, in the end, they can do it the way they want to, but I will just wish for it not to be that way. That's that's a good way to put it. Because we all like, want it. I we just, all want it. Uh, and I also think, like, the issue is, like, always, I think we talked about that as well, that you always have some bad actors that that make the entire community w look way worse than it actually is. Right? And, yeah, um, not wrong. And uh, regarding feedback, like, if you have people that make irrational responses and wishes that are just there to, to, to imbalance the game, obviously don't listen to them, but the majority of players have only good intent at least in my opinion well and i think some people are loyalists and want to you know have their side have the advantage or whatever but i yeah, think yeah. there's a solid yeah. community of us on both factions that want solid that gameplay game. solid balanced yeah. gameplay you know and i think that's the I people so well. I, a lot of the people i know and feel I the think, exact same way and yeah. You know, uh, I and mean, I also think that you can make it work with uh, asymmetry. I think you can also make it work with asymmetry. You don't mm -hmm. have to be, you don't need to have a perfectly symmetric game to make it balanced. I want there to be annoyances in the game too. Like I want there to be yeah. flasks, yeah. if that makes. I want shit to be strong. I want there to be like a yeah. man, yeah. fuck, we got to deal with that thing before it, you know, caves us in or whatever. Like that's great. Give it to both sides. Not not the exact same thing, but yeah, yeah. give advantages to both sides yeah, yeah, where yeah. they have to deal with it. Exactly. You know? And that'd be... Yeah. That's what we want, man. That I mean, that's what everyone the factions wants. Are allowed, right? like, the factions are allowed to feel differently, but uh, like try to even it out. Mm -hmm. like, give us a chance to fight against it. You know, Don't make it to where it's unobtainable. Like, Don't make another STD, you know? Let's not do that again. Let's not give Pre one side yeah, 94. Pre yeah. Let's not give another STD or maybe a 94 5 push gun without something to. 
fight that a little better. You know? I mean, to be fair, to be fair, in my opinion, it wasn't actually the stitching that was the issue. It was more the projectile. Well, that's what I mean. But like it doesn't change. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, push guns are actually relatively easy to deal with, but when it shoots a big old ball of fuck you, yeah, it's a little different, a little harder. So yeah, yeah. that being said, um, the disabled chance. The disabled chance was just very. Regardless, that yeah. was fixed. So. Harsh. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, is there anything else? You know, we're getting around an hour and a half. That's you know, I call it usually an hour and a half to an hour forty-five. Do you have anything that I don't feel? If you have anything else you want to say, feel free, man. Oh, like, this future is, content. You know, future, future content. content what I have you... a lot of stuff cooked, man. Yeah, well, what, Dude, what do you, you know? Thinking, what bro? I would really wish for. Hmm. What you know, like because they started like slowly, like the, the this entire map rework, right? I think we are currently at a map size that feels like the limit. I mean, they can always add like entire layer, but I I feel like during update wars, it's well populated, right? Like you have some queues, but they if you if you use the entire map, it actually evens out quite well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, but what I really would wish for is like a city hex, like abandoned ward, giving this. It sounds bad, wipe, you know, you end. but Deadlands, like, I want a, fu like, in the middle of the map, I'm talking, I want, the like, city. a city, dude. Like, I'm like talking, Berlin, Berlin 45. yeah, fucking you know, like Stalingrad the, the at the end of the war, dude. Fucking exactly. hiding exactly. in the fucking exactly. rubble with your rifle. Motherfucker. You know, like, just insane yeah, yeah. infantry half tracks fucking clacking down on all these guys hiding in the buildings all right multi-story buildings and so on all right like hear me out hear me out like th both factions stuff I would really dig. both factions molotov what do you think <laughs> just saying bro idea. hey i'm uh, just saying I'm you hop a little would... molly in the trench catch four or five dudes on fire takes like 20 what to set a takes like 20 25 to set a building to tier 2 30 to 40 to get it to tier 3 you know make it uh, a you have to mammon rush type thing and then you can catch some shit on fire and, funny. Uh, you know get a little molotov I think it has potential. you know Dude, hey i'm all you know? in my opinion they should go for way more of this funny stuff as well like, uh, um, where's my samurai my sword, dude? Weapons. I want a bonsai exactly. attack. Where's I want my AT sword? mine Where? on the end of a fucking pogo stick, fucking Japanese exactly. style. Bam! Fucking getting five of those guys exactly. coming out, Gilly of the Mist and Umber Wildwood. Fucking having outlaw sitting in there, you know, sitting there, and then you just see bonsai! Fucking like five dudes hit you with a punji stick. Oh my god, dude. <sighs> So like stuff like ideas. this would be so uh, nice, right? Like officer swords, uh, make uh, make shovels work as melee weapons as well. Where's our flags? Why is there no instruments? Stuff like this bullshit. Where's you know? my trumpet? Imagine there would. Where's trumpet, my trumpet? My pipes. my drums, bagpipes? Are you fuck kidding me? Come on. Like it would be so awesome, right? It would be so fucking awesome if you could get that stuff just for memes. I mean, in so many other games, you have it, and you always have one guy picking that equipment. And oh, if you don't dude. want to, right? If you want to have a tryhard operation, you just don't supply it. It's completely fine. Are you but kidding me? Like... If you don't think that you would see people just make an a regiment of officers to go sword charging, you'd be insane. Of course. You fucking but see also this, an officer with this a game, cavalry this sword? This game oh. is actually so casual in its core. That I don't know why they don't do it. Like, the game is not as tryhard as they sometimes make it to be, or regiments would wish it to be. Like, there's a lot of casuals, and I think you could get, like, these funny tools. It's it's a good way also to vent off, right? Like, also, like, flag bearing and so on, and doing, like, just do some, some funny stuff in the meantime. Also, weapons-wise, right? It's, it's unfortunate that currently, like, the shotgun is in such a weird state. And, I know an easy uh, way to make. Um, stuff as well. I know an easy way to make the shotgun great, and it wouldn't, you know, oh. be crazy. Give it dragon's breath. You can't catch anything but people <laughs> on fire, dude. You fucking pull up in a trench, nighttime, boom! Fucking big old spark flash come at you. The first guy comes uh. burning in the. Wow! No! No! Ah! 
And then you see the dude behind him go, oh, fuck. Oh, runs back, sets up in his little, you know. Oh, oh, yeah. man. It would be great. It would be great. Talk about I, shit I your britches, dude. Of that, um, in general, I would like cities to sometimes feel a bit more like city fights. I'm completely cool with having these outskirt fights, right? Like, we don't need cities everywhere, and not in every hex you need to have a big city. But sometimes I would just wish for... There should be one uh, massive city, though. Like, I feel like there are towns. Definitely a capital, right? Like, I want a capital a city, capital. yep. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we all want to have this big government building of the former parliament or whatever it was, right? Like, and then building where you have nearly endless fights. Dude. And, and you have, like... And, like, in front of that, you have a former garden or something that is destroyed with tanks. Setting up a... Thing, but as soon as they get... Hanging your flag off the big old metal pole on the top of the exactly. Capitol building, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Exactly. Stuff like that, right? And then you... Because wardens were, like, a monarchy, then you have some palace area or something. Like, there's so much you could play with, right? And the outskirts of Deadlands would still be, like, a bit less urban. Maybe the outer the outer relics would be less urban. But let's, let's make two-thirds of deadlands make it a big ass city right and you obviously cannot build that much in there it's not that secure of a hex but um, if you have the manpower outside of it oh well, if you have the manpower outside and, of it and you can protect your lodgy lanes i mean a city is a natural exactly. natural defense line like you're not gonna have lines yeah. of sight on every corner you could do actual at squads like can you imagine yeah. doing you know four flash and bone laws in a city like insane right you know the I, arcs I would, the arcs would actually would have benefits for, right? you know you actually sit there with your venom know. sit there with your venom have a tank roll by fuck do, 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 do. all four pen kill the tank instantly then a mass expersion like of infantry of... you know like oh that'd yeah. be so cool man uh, i would i would also wish that they would go more into the uh, tank upgrade and you know what would also be cool can... huh you wouldn't have um I'm just, I'm on a podcast. What's up? Sorry. Um, oh, um, already wouldn't be as significant in towns because the 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 oh yeah natural buildings cover. would natural cover, natural cover. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No cities. Cities would be really cool. I think. Um, uh, also, Graf, I do want to ask you a question. Um, huh. Why do you think, and it's mainly in early game that the imbalance in vehicles is, but why do you think that the Wardens have more vehicles, like different variations than Collies? Why do you think that is? Uh, you're bringing up that weird list where you put in armor car variants as well, right? Well, and yeah, but what I'm saying is like, uh, we have two situations that I always bring up is, um, well, there's three. So push guns, you guys have a push 250 and a push 40 mil that we don't have anything near those tech trees when those are out. Um, the, yeah. the tankette is fighting against... Well, you got to add armored cars in this because they're armored cars, but the tankettes fighting against Gax, um, Tax, and all that shit. Um, those three armored car yeah, variants. Well, hold on. But plus, you does have. Does it have a, an advantage in that scenario? Not really, because we don't get the 30 mil until you guys get your scout tank 30 mil, and you guys have the 40 mil. No, that's not true. That's actually not true. You get the Ixion one tier ahead. Yeah, but you get the 40 mil one tier ahead of us. Uh, yeah, but that one has no armor. Well, <laughs> no, and that, what I'm saying, though, is, right. like, well, to be fair, you can decrew us from the back as well. Tankette's not in a great place either, but... Yeah, um, the Ixion, but yeah, yeah. The Tankette's not in a Ixion favorable is. place. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of instances in the Colonial Army versus the Warden Army where we're fighting multiple variants with one chassis and what i mean is the tankette kind of fights the armored car with all of its variants and the scout tank plus a 40 mil push gun and that's it like it it's one chassis versus 
I would argue, three chassis or two chassis. And that happens again with the Falchion versus the, you know, I, I don't know if the model is great to have one chassis fighting so many chassis. Um, is it balanced? Is it balanced? Yes. Is it balanced? It can be. But again, in the state of the game that it is right now, cheapness does not matter. And I think that's where I'm getting no, at again is the tank yet only costs like 35 R mats, right? But it's not satisfactory to play in or use. The tankette? Yeah, it's horrible. Horrible. I don't know. Like, for one, we don't get that early kind of armor. Like, I mean, you have the Kingspire, which is per default a 12.7 tank with horrible bloom and accuracy. And, and then you get a the recon. Galette, but and it's recon, though. No, that no. is a little benefit, just to be honest. But uh, it is a lot <laughs> better off road, though. I, I mean, um, the game is scuffed, but it's also it's also not that unbalanced, actually. It's, it, it I, like I said, it's, it's not. I'm not arguing the balance in it. Um, oh yeah, it's scuffed. I mean, it, it's then very you have this off. Break, right? As, as soon as you. And what, what really feels weird is, as soon as you hit light tank, um, everything before light tanks is beyond dog shit. It's, it's not even usable anymore, so bad it is. Like, it's, it's a weird progression, right? In the early game, you always have these small steps, but as soon as you unlock prototype light tanks, why would you go into a tankette? Like, well, again, like, to be fair, though, I mean, the only thing that really sucks for us is that 68 AT dude like or half yeah, track got got uh, it, got 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 it got pushed back it got pushed back yeah it got pushed back um that uh, being said it get... it you feel it though bro i know when it got nerfed it, it felt a lot good. better but oh brother that was yeah, yeah. i mean Ooh. i'm not saying it wasn't a super fair spot beforehand but um when it was fighting tankettes I mean... and 30 mils bro i was pissed I was pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh completely man. Out, completely overpowers them. Yeah, yeah. But it's but it's you weird get, you get because ATD1 here later, it it really right? is a weird s spot, you know, because the sixty eight half track, there's no beats that get to fight it, but when we get the LTD, we have to fight eats, and also that in balance as well. I I want to talk to you about that. What do you think the way to fix our emplacement AT is right now? Uh, I mean, you can just make the E faction neutral again, as it was before 1.0. But then you guys lose your access to ARC RPGs. Um, it's also a topic that no one talks about, that Collies currently is the only faction that has uh, faction-exclusive ammunition, right? Mm. You guys are the only one that are capable of producing AP RPGs. If we capture Venoms or Banes, we cannot produce the ammunition for it. Hmm. Which is unfair. I didn't know that. Like, like you can risk Banes all the way you want to, because you know that you cannot use it. Hmm. Uh, that we cannot use it. You can risk boys, it. Boys, take uh, notes. We cannot risk, take for notes, example, boys. Take notes. Just saying, take notes. You know, uh. they never give us good <laughs> models for this. Like, you guys, got, uh, you guys got trashed with the ARC RPGs, right? With the EAT. I mean... In my opinion, make it faction neutral. It's such an integral part of base defenses that it should have the same performance. The same way the faction does not have different rifle garrisons or anti-tank garrisons. Just make, make the EAT faction neutral. I don't get it why. I think EAT and BEAT should um, be faction neutral. Because I don't want to limit you guys in us getting BEATs and EATs. I think both sides should get both. I think yeah, it's... Maybe like that. Like, make, make them look give, different. Like sometimes, right... Sometimes there's also an advantage for a beat, right? If, as soon as you have elevation and so on, mm -hmm. sometimes you might... There is a chance for beat to be solid, but nine times out of ten, an EAT is going to outperform. It, it's better. Now, yeah, yeah. here's it, it here's another thing I do want to ask. After, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I mean, you also don't have the 45-meter tank with the 40-millimeter... That's what I was going to ask gun, you next. You have the push gun, which is underused, and it was originally a warden push gun, and now the colleagues want the high velocity 68 push gun back. Um, 
profanity enough, but well, because uh, of HGD, we're, we already addressed this. I'm just saying, but uh, HGD is an issue, and that's why we want yeah, the 68. Yeah, all back. I'm saying is, like, both factions have underutilized tools, right? And um, we got two things yeah. to talk about because uh, Room Boy brought up a good thing. Do you think it's fair that Colonial 120s can get stolen but not Warden? Uh, big topic. Um, the artillery guns are exceptionally different, right? Like, is it is it? F In general, I think it's it, 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 tendencies to unfair, because wardens can just let them be there and force you to destroy them, and there's basically no way of you getting them. On the other hand. I mean, a lot of. I know that everyone disagrees with me on that one. I personally prefer Collie 120, but again, super personal. Mm -hmm. I know that the entire faction disagrees with me. <laughs> We're gonna have a little <laughs> talk, Playboy. Ooh, okay. Uh, so, I, I like, I, so, you like being able I, to retreat like better? The, Is that what you like? Is it, you like I, being able to retreat like fast? Of it. Uh, so, you like being uh, able to retreat really I mean, quick? No, no, no. Is that it? No, no, he heavy trucks, uh, heavy trucks, and artillery is like a good combination. I have to admit, though, uh, Collie RT before it got the capability of getting towed, I think was just worse. I think the towing with the heavy truck combination actually enables nice mobility options. Like you can actually now reliably get on nice flanks, and you can also su support those flank positions now with the heavy truck logistically wise. But um, I know it's a super niche thing to look at, and in general, our 120 is probably better. It's a more generalistic approach to RT. It works in more cases, and it's it's more foolproof, right? It, like, it has, like, collies don't have the option to get a tanky 120. And all it takes is three stickies to kill it, right? Obviously, so, that's an issue. And, I think uh, what yeah. would be really nice... Um, what I would really like for the Collies is um, yeah. being able to um, – this is going to sound weird, and I don't know how to implement it. But with the use of sandbags, I would like to be able to make a full circle of sandbags and put uh -huh. 120 inside, right? I don't want to be able to entrench them. But I am tired of getting... Okay, so my whole dilemma with the 120 is the counter already battle. But it actually works. What you, what you are saying actually works. I know that one for one and some make use of it. We do it. You have but it's not as effective that, as what uh, I'm getting at. I want no, to be able no, no, to do no, 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 a, it's not, it's a really good full covered circle is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and yeah, what I'm saying is like a yeah. uh, build menu thing. Put a build menu circle down and um, be able to like... Just place bags with the left click, like you place a sandbag wall down. I want a full circle sandbag wall instead of these weird ass U's like and weird ass, like, no. Like a prepared firing position. Correct. And, uh, like a size mm -hmm. of an octagon, and you just get a big blueprint, and then you feed, like, I don't know, like 15 10, sandbags. 10, 15 into it sandbags. And it's yep. Once, right? Yep. That's what I want. Um, so, um, this is what I think would be really fun, though, or this is where I, I really struggle to find the arty fight in 120s to be even, and that's why I do stick to my guns, though, in the 150s. The 50 extra meters matters so much, depending, like, yeah. with wind, it, like, it matters so much. That being said, but secondly... The fact that we cannot kill your 120 guns while they're in a in a trench. Octagon, yeah. Octagon, yeah. It, 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 it literally, the counter already battle is one-sided. Because it takes one cop, it, let's say, at 120s. Uh, it, uh, and that's why I say at 150s, uh, we, uh, we, it's a battle, and it's, we have 50 extra meters, so if you don't set up before us, whatever. But then it's an actual battle because it's it's healing, it's accuracy, it's it, those things matter. But when we're out uh -huh. ass in the open, we can get decrewed way easier. And even then, we don't get the health benefits of a trench. 
I, yeah. we, the only benefit I see, and this is why I said what I said, do you like retreating faster? Because that's our advantage. We can retreat our shit faster. That's it. That's our advantage. The, the, uh, that's another thing. Shorter. That's another thing is um, we can advance. Right, but if uh, there's that, any arty position or any... That's what I'm saying. The 50 extra meters matter so much because say we're hitting a town hall. Like we're hitting it and you don't have arty set up. All you have to do is set up 50 meters behind that. We can't Damn. shoot you now. And then you already have us prepared dialed in. Positions. And prepared, prepared positions. positions. It, it just... It's, it's hard to push as colonial. It's, I agree. It's, it's just... Pushing, pushing into prepared positions as co with colonial artillery is exceptionally hard. I agree. I think there's advantages on mobile fronts with the... That's the same reason why SPGs are good, right? Yes. That... Um, the setup time is basically nothing. Yep. Um, I, I, I think in an artillery duel situation and in a warden R in a defense perspective, our artillery gun is exceptionally good. And the fact that it cannot be captured is weird. I agree on it, but it's a weird mechanic as well. Even if you capture it, you still have to put it into your seaport once and then lift it. It's, it's super weird. And I just, I think and, that's bullshit, um, to be honest. Like, I really hate. I think you should be able to capture everything that's in an octagon. Just get it out of there. I don't know why it is so... I don't like, know the code behind it, if you but it, it's if, bullshit. If you, right? Like, every push gun can be wrenched and can be stolen. Why can't I wrench the thing? And why can't I even use the guns against them, right? It's a bit weird. I, I just... It's understandable and weird. I Okay, so I'm glad we agree on this, though. That's I think a lot of people understand that, and so... Again, devs, I like asymmetrical gaming. I'm not mad that our 120s yeah. are in the position they are because you give us that advantage in 150s. If it wasn't that, I would be fucking livid. But the fact we do get the yeah, better I, 150s, I, arguably, I can swallow the pill at 120. But again, when if you would have yeah. fucked us twice, no. No. But that's the only reason I'm okay with it is we get that 50 extra on top of you in 150. So, again, there is give and take. That's asymmetrical gaming. Mint. I guess. I mean, I think with the 120s it's even more than with the 150s because your gun can do things that our one simply cannot. Like setting up in weird positions and being even remotely tanky because unemplaced warden 120 is really a joke, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, there's some, like, it's always, I, I put it this way, I, I mean, it's also easier to capture, so I usually do not run into the problem that I cannot get a Warden 120, uh, a Collie 120, but there's some situations, uh, that only a Collie 120 can solve, right? I agree with that, and that's where I'm like, that's I'm okay with this, there are definite yeah. advantages to both sides, and that's where I'm, yeah, yeah. the yeah. arty game... Yeah, yeah is I've argued with my friends that it's unbalanced. And then I've come to the conclusion after analyzing all 120, all 150 SPG, all of the arty gaming, all of it. It's okay that our gun is arguably worse, but better <laughs> balance. Um, it, it's okay that our gun is wimpier and can, you know, have all these issues because it's mobile um, and the fact that they give us the option to really be a solid traditional arty with 150 where it really matters. Um, yeah. you know, that's yeah. where, I, that's where I'm okay. Um, yeah. but I, 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 think to wrap this whole thing up, um, and to not be a fucking dead giraffe, um, devs tanks don't feel good right now for collies. I don't think wardens enjoy beating the shit out of a lifeless collie front. Give the collies life. Give the wardens love in infantry. Give the wardens love in facility. Well, give collies love in facility more right now, actually. But balance game. Make warden have good opponent. Warden's beating one arm tied behind his back collie right now. Uh, yeah, Make okay. balance. It's a bit like yeah. 
Make 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 game balanced. Boys, girls, Graf, do you have anything else you want to say to everyone before we wrap it up here? No, I think I think we can all agree that in the current state, the update is a bit underwhelming. For five uh, months, yes. Yeah. Especially for the cook time. Well, okay. Especially in Dev's defense, time, yeah. in Dev Man defense, I will stand up for you, Dev. They did a lot of they bug did, fixes. They said that they were burning out. And they, they also said that they were burning out. I right? agree. That they needed a break, so it's not actually five months. That's and right, Boundless. Break. Like, I agree. I agree. Don't so, don't burn yourself um, either, Dead Man. We need you to keep poking that server hamster when he dies. All right. So. I, I mean, I think I mean, we all love the game, and I think the only reason we are all so upset is is that we see the potential, and where it could be, and that we are all a bit underwhelmed that it is not there yet. Yep. Patience is a virtue. And, I, I do agree uh, with that as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. Graf, yeah. um, I do want to thank you for coming on to the bone bone cast. Uh, this will be posted to YouTube yeah, me. probably in uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Once it's uploaded Graf, I'll send it to you to share whoever you want. Um, guys, if you guys could Thanks. please, uh, follow me on uh, YouTube. Give me that sub button. Drop a like. Love you boys. Peace.